Okay, today I'm going to show Visual Basic students how to do collision detection between two picture boxes. In fact, in one situation where the picture box, the one picture box, is an enemy that is animated with an underlying timer. So here's the goal. In this maze project that I'm currently uh, working on, I am trying to make it so that I have a, a ghost that chases after this... Uh, Welcome to the maze. I want a ghost that chases after this player that moves around with the arrow keys. Well, obviously there's no ghost, on, no enemy on the screen right now. So let's all go to uh, uh, the project, the design window, and add a picture box. And let's name that picture box Pick Ghost. Resize the picture box, and let's just put it in the middle somewhere. Resize it so it's about the same size, maybe a tad smaller, but or just exactly the same size as the player and rename it like I just said pick ghost. PIC of course is the prefix for picture boxes in Visual Basic. All professional programmers use good prefixes for different kinds of objects. It's good style. And let's throw in a background color for now that's like dark enough that we can see it like some blue shade of blue. Later, of course, you can throw a GIF or a JPEG in there that looks like a real Pac-Man ghost. Or you could put a zombie in there. and We could make this a, like a Walking Dead game or something. Now, that is uh, uh, copyrighted. I should not say Walking Dead in this video because uh, I would need AMC's approval, the company that uh, makes uh, the Walking Dead series. So there it is. I have that. I'm just stalling for other people to make that picture box named PIC Ghost. Now let's add a timer to this project. Let's come down here uh, wherever you can find it in your Visual Basic toolbox. Find the object called timer that we're just learning about in this unit of study. Double click it. Timers don't show up on the screen. The, the player doesn't see the timer when he or she plays the program. Timers come down onto this component tray uh, and uh, they just appear right there. Don't give birth to a child someday and name it Timer 1. Give it a name like Aaron or Andrea or maybe Zach if it's a boy. Don't name it Timer 1. So let's single click Timer 1 and go over to its name property and rename it TMR Ghost so that it matches the picture box name, Pick Ghost. While you're here in the property window, change the enabled property to True. So that right away when this game starts, that timer starts ticking, and whatever it does behind the scenes, it happens right from the beginning. In this situation, I want that timer to be enabled equals true. And I, uh, the interval property, I think 100 works out to be good. Does anybody know how many seconds 100 on an interval works out to be? Correct, Strat. Uh, he just answered off, off the camera. A 100 as an interval property is one-tenth of a second, or 0.1, if you like the decimal form. Okay, so now that we've done all, all the setup here on the interface, let's all double-click this timer ghost down here and double-click. That puts your blinking cursor in private sub n sub tmr ghost tick. So any code that we put in here executes every tenth of a second. Every tenth of a second this code executes. So if we put a message box in here, bam, 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 10 message boxes per second will pop up. That would be the most annoying program ever. Only second place to a program that had an interval of one. In which case it would be, Tommy, how many message boxes per second? 1,000. Correct. I can think about it. OK, so uh, we wouldn't do a message box. But here's what we would do. We would put a comment above this uh, for good style. Um, moves ghost towards player, something like this. Ghost place chases player. Yeah, that would be better. Ghost chases player, and collisions are detected. That would be a good comment there for that private sub n sub. Now we could. Uh, figure this out and write the necessary if statements and dot left plus equals one, minus equals one. I trust that you could do that because you read the lecture notes. And all of that is fully 
explained in the lecture notes. For convenience, we are going to now go to my to my uh, specs for this assignment, Maze 3 Pac-Man, Visual Basic Year 2013-14. Uh, this may change in the future. But if you scroll down the specs for Maze 3 and highlight the code, refresh that page because I just changed it earlier today. Make sure you refresh this uh, web browser page. And there's a bunch of uh, a, a segment of code in there where it says code for TMR ghost tick method. Highlight all that and copy and paste it and put it into the uh, spot where my blinking cursor is. Put it in here and run the program. I'm going to pause the video now and we'll check uh, in a moment to see if everybody gets this running. Well, there you have it. We can now execute the program. And not only does the ghost chase after the player due to these four if statements, but in addition to that, when the ghost does touch the player, or I, or I should say intersects with the player, like right now, it resets. And that all works. Well, let's look at the code for a second. Uh, right here, towards the bottom of that code that we pasted into TMR ghost tick method, every one tenth of a second, Visual Basic is checking to see if pick player dot bounds, like the outside perimeter of pick player, if that perimeter touches, also known as intersects with, parentheses, pick ghost dot bounds. So we're really asking if any part of the boundary of this player touches or intersects with, like a Venn diagram kind of thing, the boundaries of the other picture box. And that covers it from all sides. In some recent version of Visual Basic, they added this snazzy intersects with method. Don't worry what bounds is. Uh, that just has to be there. It's not going to be covered uh, anywhere else in this course. Obviously, pick player and pick ghost are needed. You could flip-flop them. It doesn't matter which you have typed uh, on what inside the parentheses or out. And it just works. In my lecture notes, I do show you how you could actually use dot right, dot left, dot top, and dot bottom with a bunch of ands and ors. That would be so 1990s-ish. Uh, if you did it that way, because this version of VB has a built-in intersects with method, which behind the scenes probably does use dot right and dot left and dot width. Do we care? No, we don't care. As long as it's an available method that we can use in this current version of VB, it's just as good in the opinion of me, the your uh, ninth grade programming teacher. Uh, there are times when you should do things the hard way, but this would not be one of them. Okay, uh, there you have it. Uh, all of that is uh, uh, part of uh, this Maze 3 assignment, which uh, is also known as Pac-Man. And let's check the specs one last time to see if there's anything else snazzy relating to the ghost and collision detection with the player that you could add. Oh, you could make the player bounce off the walls instead of colliding with them uh, and resetting. You can also make the ghost stay within the walls of the maze as it chases the player. Instead of in the current version, it goes through the walls. That's considered extra credit in the year 2014. Maybe in the future that will be part of this assignment. Uh, you can add more than one ghost. And if you do that, that means you'd have extra picture boxes, but extra similarly named timers. One timer for each picture box would be a, a good beginner way of doing it. Oh, you could even add power pills. You don't have to add like a hundred power pills all over the place, just like a string of five of them or so. And maybe you want to use that intersects with method to be able to tell if the player trampled over top of the power pill. What would you do to the power pill if you're obeying the law the, the rules of original Pac-Man? If you want if you did an intersect with power pill and that was equal to true, what happens in the game of Pac-Man? Andrea? You got it. She said dot visible equals false, in case you didn't hear that. That was Andrea. 
Good job. Zach, were you going to say the same thing? Yes. Okay, good job too, Zach. Oh, then you could also update that score. You could count the number of power pills that were eaten or visible false. And you could update a variable or a label behind the scenes and give the person points for going over the power pills. Okay, I hope that uh, clears up some uh, questions and uh, I hope you enjoy the future of your uh, game uh, writing uh, game development career.